Oh how the time flies, believe it or not, but the last major release of Beta Flight was in January 2023. Now, almost a year later, it's time for Beta Flight 4.5. And yes, the first release candidate for the Beta Flight 4.5 is out, and here's what changed. The list of changes for the Beta Flight 4.5 is quite long, but if you were expecting some ground changing new flight performance related features, then well, most probably the Beta Flight 4.5 might be a slight disappointment. Yes, of course, there are flight performance related changes, but majority of the new stuff that goes into the Beta Flight 4.5 is, let's say, GPS and maybe in the future navigation related. Flies better than before? Most probably. Is the difference huge? Well, this is a completely different question. But okay, anyhow, what actually changed? First of all, there is a group of changes that is GPS related and in the future might be a base of beta flight introducing or reintroducing navigation capable functionalities. You know, position hold, altitude hold, maybe even waypoint navigation. This kind of a stuff. In this group we get the major GPS overhaul as well as magnetometer updates. Definitely not something that will be noticeable by all freestyle and racing pilots, but something that will make in the future navigation with beta flight possible. And that means that the GPS is more reliable, works better and in general it's just better handling of all the GPS related communication between the flight controller and the GPS module. Second of all, the magnetometer finally works as it should be. Yes, at the moment, Beta Flight has no use for the magnetometer at all, but the magnetometer will be required for position hold and the waypoint navigation in the future. So it's a foundation for future feature development. And then there was a series of updates and improvements for the GPS rescue, aka GPS return to home, and the landing procedure in the beta flight. In general, it should just behave better, go home better, and land with greater confidence. Not too shabby, if you ask me. And what's equally important now, the GPS rescue can be initiated almost exactly above you. Previously, when you enabled the GPS rescue too close, the beta flight was just disarming and falling to the ground. This is no longer happening. As long as there is a minimum altitude margin, the beta flight 4.5 drone will climb, fly to the minimum safe distance, turn back, and do the approach and landing. If you ask me, that's definitely a safer procedure than the one used before. And finally, the angle and horizon modes were almost completely rewritten. Now, everything in the self-leveling modes, which are angle and horizon, is happening in the earth reference frame. That means if during a flight with angle or horizon mode, you will use the yaw stick, the turn will happen in the earth frame. That means your UAV will make a coordinated turn. Previously, it would just rotate in its own frame and basically fly forward. Forward. If you wanted to have the coordinated turn, you had to use both yaw and roll sticks. Now, when using the earth reference frame, your stick while flying in angle and horizon is everything that's required to have a nicely coordinated turns. On top of that, there are some failsafe related changes, which make that the failsafe should be more reliable and in general acts better. On the other hand, let's hope that you will never go into the failsafe situation, because no matter how good the failsafe handling procedure is, well, it's almost at least stressful situation. And then there is experimental and still in development feature called the easy landing. What's the biggest problem when flying with big and heavy cine lifter with the expensive camera on board? It's, of course, 
landing. To be more precise, the gentle and soft touchdown. Because of the way how the iTerm and the air mode and in general mixer works, any bump during the landing might cause the drone to go into the crazy jumping mode. Easy Landing tries to fix this problem by both restricting of the relationship between the air mode and the throttle, as well as lowering the eye term when the sticks are center and the throttle is pulled down. So hopefully there should be much less bounce back when touchdown. However, do remember this is still an experimental function and you should test it before you will decide to use it in the real life applications. And now, believe this, Betaflight 4.5 will slightly improve the experience if you are using Betaflight on the airplane. Crazy stuff! When Betaflight 4.5 is used on the airplane, simply pulling the throttle to zero will no longer reset the item. And that means you will keep the stabilization even when throttle is zero. And that improves the landing experience considerably. On airplanes, the item is the major factor that keeps your airplane stable. If it's pulled to zero, every time you pull throttle to zero, you basically lose stabilization when landing. And this can always be a scary experience. With Betaflight 4.5, it should no longer happen and the landings should be much easier. Now, can you use Betaflight to fly your flying wing? Yes, yes you can. However, you do have to be aware that there will be a lot of limitations. Majority of the Betaflight functions note from the multi-rotor drones will just not be available when you are using Betaflight on an airplane. What will work is basically the receiver, mixer and basic stabilization. Even the process of setting up and configuring mixer as well as assigning certain output on the flight controllers to handle servo might be complicated because airplanes are not just the main target either for the Betaflight development team and the manufacturers of majority of flight controllers. But once you get through it, yes, it's fully possible to use Betaflight on airplanes. And finally, there is a series of changes for RPM filters in the form of the dimmable RPM harmonics, customizable initial dynamic idle percentage, the improvements for the LED strips, and Betaflight 4.5 will officially work on the artery tech 8032 flight controllers, plus some black box updates, ability to simply export the GPX from your black box, if of course, if you have the GPS enabled, and many other updates. The full list of the changes that went into the Betaflight 4.5 is available at the link in the description of this video. So go there, read it, and you will know everything. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, this was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and, like always, happy flying!